What's up YouTube and multi-tool people? I'm Joe and you're watching my channel Ink and Iron back with a multi-tool comparison video. On the table you see before you the Leatherman Surge on the right and on the left the SOG Power Access Deluxe. Um, these knives, knives, multi-tools represent basically the top of the line tools from each of these manufacturers. The SOG Power Access Deluxe has the most tools of any SOG tool, and the Leatherman Surge is one of the most renowned tools from Leatherman. The reason I'm comparing them is because of size. You can see these are quite large. You can see we have this geared mechanism on the SOG. This is common to all of the SOG tools. Uh, it adds compound leverage, so this gearing mechanism gives you only half the splay um, of your handle splay, so the jaws move in the same manner as the back of the handles. If I move my SOG, you can see that they're moving differently. When I get way out here, now my jaws are wide open, but my handles are splayed super, super far. So you have a two to one ratio of handle splay to jaw splay, and this gives you twice the cutting power that you're putting. If you're putting 40 pounds of grip force on the handles, you will get 80 pounds of um, bite force, so to speak, on your cutters. So that's something to keep in mind. In terms of the cutters, uh, Leatherman does come with replaceable cutters. They do want you to buy them yourself and install them yourself, so they kind of skirt around their own warranty. So think what you will about that. Cutter length, I do think the SOG does have longer cutters for cutting um, wire. They both have hard wire notches down here at the base. In terms of bolt turning, uh, roughly the same area in here in this sort of almond shaped cutout for bolt turning, although you will have to splay your handles about twice as wide to get about the same splay that you get on the Leatherman. So keep that in mind for the SOG. I think the SOG is more finely serrated, um, but in terms of tip performance, basically the same. They have almost the same geometry. My Leatherman is slightly off because I have hard used it over the course of many years. The SOG, uh, not so much. Okay, and in terms of handle length, uh, almost the same. Um, for tools this size, we are we are very comparable here. I think there's maybe uh, three or four millimeters extra reach there on the Leatherman. Let's see, the SOG has all of its tools accessible from the outside, which is a nice feature. So let's go ahead and start comparing them, shall we? You can see they clump a little bit on the SOG. Um, so I know this isn't a saw, but this is the uh, T-shank adapter from Leatherman, and it does come with a saw. All you have to do is open this up and take out your little T-shank tool and you can swap in. They give you a saw standard when you buy a surge. So yeah, pr let's, let's pretend uh, this is a saw. Actually, you know what? Let me go grab it. Okay, well that's a little embarrassing. I can't seem to find it. So we're gonna substitute in the uh, Leatherman wave here just to get the uh, sawtooth pattern because it is very similar and uh, they look almost identical. So. Uh, the reach in terms of like how much cutting length you have is probably going to be pretty similar. Um, although I know the T-shank insert is actually slightly shorter than, than what's on the wave here. So uh, yeah, the saws are going to be pretty comparable on these two multi-tools. And you can swap out the uh, diamond file and double cut file and metal saw for the Leatherman Surge. So that's pretty neat. Um, as I said, you can swap out the file in terms of filing area. I mean, these tools are about as similar as it gets. Um, that's the double cut. It uh, does have a metal saw on the edge, although the Leatherman one is a little bit finer. This one's probably gonna cut a little bit faster. And you have a single cut file versus the diamond file on the back side here. Okay, so that is those two tools. You can see the locking mechanism here is just sort of a tab that you pull on the Leatherman. It is a little thing that you push, although they do virtually the same thing. All right, serrated blade. Much skinnier on the SOG. Um, both pretty equally useful, both with uh, thumb opening holes, although I think this one's a little bit easier to access on the Surge in my opinion. Uh, I do like the narrowness of the blade on the SOG. And in terms of pattern, 
I mean, we are super, super similar, so cutting performance is going to be virtually the same on these two. And straight blade. Oh, not there, right here. Okay. So again, a very narrow blade on the SOG. In terms of cutting length, that definitely goes to the Leatherman, although this is going to be illegal in some jurisdictions, so check your local knife laws, especially if you're in the United States. Both have a, a hole opening mechanism, although this is more for nails, considering it's in the middle of the tool versus on the end. Um, yeah, I did have a performance issue with the SOG. Um, in the first one, I sent this in for warranty because the first time I went to use the blade, it bent way out and um, disengaged from the lock. So yeah, that was actually pretty sketchy. Um, but this one seems to have no trouble, this second version that I have. But just something I felt I should mention. Moving on, let's take a look at the scissors. And um, the SOG Power Access Deluxe does not have scissors, actually. So it's just going to be the uh, Leatherman Surge here. Get a little... Uh, cloth or something to cut. These are pretty robust scissors. They are the largest on any Leatherman tool and they are quite handy. I'm not exactly sure why the Power Access Deluxe decided to forego scissors. Um, they are one of my favorite tools but you know your mileage may vary. If you don't need scissors take that into consideration. All right let me uh, splay out the rest of the tools here. They're not the easiest to uh, pull out here on the SOG but they do clump so that does add some usability. They all lock and uh, they are all accessible from the outside, so that is one nice thing about it. You do have to open up the Leatherman Surge to get at some of the tools. And okay, so these are all of our accessory tools. Let's go to the Surge, pull out its set. Okay, yeah, you can see a little bit more finicky without having all the tools on the outside. I've got a um, can opener with a small flathead screwdriver at the tip. Um, I will say this tip really impedes the function of the can opener. You can see that on my can opener comparison video. This can opener on the Leatherman Surge is the cleanest cutting can opener I have on any of my multi-tools. It also features a wire stripping notch, if I can show you, there you go wire stripping notch here in the base that is very, very wide. So if you're stripping a lot of wire, uh, I think the uh, Leatherman Surge is probably going to be your go-to there, and if you're opening cans. Uh, in terms of wire stripping on here, I don't believe we have a wire stripping tool. Um, so that's something to note on the Power Access Deluxe. Uh, alls. We've got basically the same amount of reach on both of our alls, a much bigger eye on this one although a really thin piece of metal right here. Um, I don't know if I would trust the long-term durability of you know slamming this into something really hard, um, aluminum or steel, but probably for wood boring it should be fine. Although it lacks the, um, the edge work that the, uh, the Leatherman has on it, this is a very tight radius curve in here, very good for reaming. Um, not quite as good on the SOG Power Access to Lux. We do have a dedicated bottle opener here. The bottle opener is just gonna be the can opener on the Surge. We do have a very small flat driver on here. That can be good for uh, eyewear or fine adjustments. We have no such driver on the Leatherman Surge. We simply have the um, bit exchanger here. So you can get an extra set of bits, although the Leatherman Surge doesn't come with it standard. Right now I've just got the two-dimensional Phillips and the flathead. Uh, we do have a larger flathead on here. Um, this also doubles as a scraper. As you can see by the grind, it's sort of a flat chisel, like a blunt chisel. Um, and really it should be because this is also a driver tool that I'll show you in just a minute. We do have a two dim or, sorry, three-dimensional Phillips head on here, which is quite nice and even uh, you know makes an effort to go more towards the center of the tool, although not quite as good as something like the Gerber center drive or something like that. Uh, we've got a couple of flat heads here on the other side with the awl on the surge. These are not incredibly useful in, in my use case, but you know, if you need a scraper, this is pretty good. And if you need a finer flat head, you've got it there. Uh, what else? We have another flat head at the end of the bottle opener here. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it. 
So let's go over this driver function on the SOG and then uh, we'll do some weight comparisons. So this is one of the main advantages that the SOG has. You can see it locks out in a 90 degree position. It also locks out in a fully extended position. You can see the tools kind of clump together as you move them around, right? If I pull that out, it starts to pull out other tools. So if you like that, that's something to like. If you don't like that, then something to dislike on the SOG. And uh, where's my pouch here? So here's the sheath that it comes with. It comes with a bit set, including this thing right here, which I'll show you is a bit adapter. So it fits on the end of here. Not incredibly securely, it definitely wiggles around a bit, but then you're able to use any standard quarter inch driver bits with your SOG in an extended position or in a um, 90 degree locked position. And further, since these handles come out like this, now you have a super long, super torquing driver uh, if you really need it. I did use that once and uh, it actually came in handy. So yeah, your, your mileage may vary, although I would give the uh, overall driver function to the SOG because of the bit set that it comes with. It just takes a little bit more time to set up. And in terms of what you get for your money, when you buy the uh, SOG Power Access Deluxe, you're going to pay about 80 USD. And what you get is the sheath and the bit set along with it. It does not come with a pocket clip. There is no option for a pocket clip. When you buy the Leatherman Surge, you get the Surge and a sheath. And uh, that's about it. Pocket clip comes separately and the driver uh, bit kit also comes separately. Uh, for the SOG, you get all that stuff I just told you for 80 USD. For the Surge, you get this with no clip, um, but you get a sheath for 140 USD. So in terms of a savings, I think the SOG is, is definitely where it's at. Take off the Surge clip just to be fair here. Leatherman Surge, whoops, sorry. 348.6 grams and the SOG Power Access Deluxe, 243.6 grams. Okay, 8.6 ounces on the SOG Power Access Deluxe, 12.3 ounces on the Leatherman Surge. So the Surge is quite a heavy hitter in terms of its bulk and its overall um, sort of profile. It can be carried in the pocket, it is a quite a bit you know, chunky, I do it myself. Um, but that being said, there is no pocket clip option for the SOG. So it's gonna come down to uh, how you like to carry. Uh, are you more oriented towards large knives and scissors and cutting implements? Cause the surge is gonna be a little more geared towards that versus the uh, sort of driver function and um, you know, more compound leverage pliers that the uh, SOG gives you over here. So. There you go. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you're asking me which one you should go for, um, I like the feel of the Leatherman a lot more. Like I said, the knife failed on my first version of these, and that kind of made me distrust SOG a little bit in terms of their manufacturing and their quality control. I've had fewer problems with Leatherman, although Leatherman has their problems too, especially with that new free series. Um, the Surge and the Wave and Charge series are, are really their bread and butter, I think. If you enjoyed this video, like, sub, do the things. Also do knives and other multi-tools, and I do fountain pens and typewriters and anything I want because this is a vlog. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right, bye.